At 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Avery Harper in Washington, tracking the latest in the fight against the coronavirus. I'll have the details coming up. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 67 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. It is humid out there. What does the rest of the day look like? We are joined with Mike Osterhage in just a few moments. Good morning, Wednesday, December 30th. The last Wednesday of 2020, and it was kind of gross out to start the day, Sarah. Yeah, I, it was yucky. I, I did my hair and then walked outside for a minute and then... Had to do it again? Had to do it again. It's, it's, <laughs> it's what it is when you're female. <laughs> all right, checking in with Mike. Mike, is it going to be this gross all day? But you look lovely, Sarah, as she always. She looks perfect. Right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and then the rain's going to start to pick up. There's really hardly anything showing up on radar right now. Take a look at it. We've had these couple little sprinkles. There may be some mist out there, but we will, again, see rain starting to continue to develop throughout the day. And then later on this afternoon, we do have a couple of uh, thunderstorms that are going to be possible. Some of those could be on the, the strong side, and we'll show you the outlet. That's uh, basically 281 and east of there. And again, temperatures are even warmer than what they were yesterday. Normal high is 62. So we're way above that. And yes, there's a ton of humidity out there. There's a ton of mountain cedar as well. And then we've got that next front moving through tonight. And that's probably going to shake up those trees a lot. So in the next couple of days, you may be suffering from the, uh, the mountain cedar. So we'll make it up to 72 degrees today. Basically, Temperatures aren't going to move all that much. I mean, five, six, seven degrees, and that's about it. Some of those thunderstorms, again, could be on the strong side. The front's going to move through here in town, obviously sooner in the hill country, but late afternoon, about dinner time or so, wind will shift around to the northwest, and that's going to pull in much colder air. And then late tonight, also the rain will continue to pick up overnight. And then late tonight is when we'll start to see some uh, wintry precipitation in portions of the hill country. And the Weather Service did issue a winter storm watch for portions of the hill country. It does include Gillespie and Kerr counties and then off to the northwest could see uh, maybe a couple of inches of some wet snow on some of the grassy surfaces and that's going to be late tonight and then tomorrow throughout the day. So we'll get this all sorted out. Who's going to see what kind of precipitation and what's in store for 2021 in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Long time no see. Yeah, long time no see, Mike. Good morning and good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday morning. All right, right now, a lot of green on the screen all around the city. Things look good. We're dealing with one accident here. It was going to be it's actually eastbound North Loop 1604 at Gold Canyon Drive. A two vehicle accident looks like that's about cleared up now. So good news there if you are heading in that direction. Take a look at the trans guy right now. Let's just look at 37 in Jones. That looks good on the southeast side. Let's see what else we have here. 281 at the quarry looking good and 90 west at Zalzamora. Those eastbound lanes, one car flowing. That's about it. Max, back to you. Thanks, Nick. The coronavirus and Congress this morning, a community and a nation mourning the loss of an incoming member of the House of Representatives. He died because of COVID. This high profile death comes as more than 124,000 Americans are currently hospitalized in a more contagious strain from the UK is detected right here in the US. ABC's Avery Harper with the latest from our nation's capital. Louisiana Congressman Luke Letlow is now the first member of Congress or member elect to die of COVID-19. The Louisiana Republican husband and father of two was hospitalized on December 19th and never recovered. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards saying in a statement, quote, I am heartbroken he will not be able to serve our people as a U.S. representative, but I am even more devastated for his loving family. The news comes as the more easily spread mutation of COVID-19 from the U.K. is discovered in rural Colorado. The patient with the variant is a man in his 20s with no travel history. Health officials saying distribution of the vaccine, which is believed to be effective against the variant, is critical. Only 2.1 million doses of the vaccine have been administered. That's far behind the 20 million that the Trump administration promised by the end of the year. President-elect Joe Biden issuing a stark warning. If you continue to move as it is now, it's going to take years, not months, to vaccinate the American people. Trump administration officials say the federal government can only do so much. The federal government doesn't invade Texas or Montana and provide shots to people. We support the yes. state and locals in doing that.
Meanwhile, hospitals in California are struggling to keep up with the number of patients who need critical care. It's not stop. Hospitalizations in Los Angeles County up nearly 1,000 percent from two months ago, and hospitals are at risk of running low on supplies. If we can't keep an adequate supply of oxygen, patients are going to die. We have yet to see the impact of millions of travelers this holiday season on coronavirus case numbers. Many health officials are bracing for surges in the new year. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. Well, here's the latest COVID-19 numbers for Bear County. Mayor Ron Nirenberg announced 975 new cases and 11 new deaths. In addition, hospitalizations are still going up. The city is reporting 1,116 people in local hospitals with 314 in the ICU and 170 on ventilators. And a limited number of local doctor's offices now providing the vaccine. Now, private practices like pharmacies have to go through the enrollment and a training process to get the vaccine. First, one local doctor and his staff at Castle Hills Family Practice got the vaccine themselves. Now they are thrilled to be able to offer it to their patients, but it does take special permission to do this. They get the demographics of how many patients, of what category do you have, and how many people of healthcare worker designation, or how many elderly people do you serve, and what locations you have. Now, doctors do have to keep track of who gets vaccinated, and they have to report any side effects through specific government systems. They also have to prove that they have the freezers to store the vaccine. Now, this doctor says most offices, like his, don't have deep freezers to store the Pfizer vaccine, but they can accommodate the Moderna vials. Time now is 436, 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, the latest on the legal jeopardy facing the woman who falsely accused a teenage boy of stealing her phone. And next, the latest on efforts by lawmakers to expand COVID-19 relief checks, trying to make it from $600 to $2,000. Like Max just said, 67 degrees, a bit warmer than we've been seeing the last couple of days this morning. But will those temperatures go down? Mike says we have a cool front in our way and lots of rain. Make sure you tune in for that forecast. In your morning headlines, President Donald Trump's push for bigger $2,000 COVID-19 relief checks has stalled out in the Republican-led Senate. With Republican senators deeply split over new spending, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has blocked a swift vote proposed by Democrats. The GOP leader signaled an alternative approach that links Trump's demand for aid with restrictions the president wants on tech companies and for a new commission to review the election results. McConnell says the Senate will begin a process to address the issues but the next steps are highly uncertain and it's quite possible no bill passes. The Democratic-led House has already approved the larger checks. Now, optimism after President Donald Trump signed the COVID relief bill Sunday ran out of steam on Wall Street yesterday. Now, stocks did gain ground in the morning. They set multiple records in Monday's session highs, but then they closed lower for the day at the end of trading. Now, Asian shares are also mixed after a lackluster day. The Dow lost about 68 points, but still it closed at 30,335, still about a thousand points higher than the pre-COVID market index. The Labor Department says President Donald Trump's delayed signing of a new COVID relief bill should not impact unemployment benefits. The measure includes a $300 federal boost in weekly payments for workers collecting unemployment benefits that last 11 weeks. Some lawmakers were concerned some payments may be missed because of how long it took the bill to go through, but the payments are retroactive to the end of December and claimants are expected to receive the funds due to them. The benefit goes until March 14th. The relief deal also extends payments under the CARES Act and the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program by 11 weeks. All right, big news for the Spurs. Los Angeles Lakers listing LeBron James as questionable for tonight's showdown, taking on the Spurs. They're saying that he has a left ankle injury, a sprain to be specific. Now, the four-time NBA champion, LeBron James, did play in the Lakers' 115-107 loss to the Blazers on Monday. Also on Monday, the Spurs announced that fans would not be allowed at the AT&T Center as planned this Friday when the Spurs scheduled to host the Lakers again they stopped fans from coming in because of an uptick in cases in our area. So tonight's game taken on the Lakers tipped off, tips off 730 AT&T Center. Again, no in-person attendance game available on Fox Sports Southwest and Spectrum Sportsnet.
All right, time to go bowling. We are in the middle of bowl season, and the Texas Longhorns didn't waste any time getting on the scoreboard. Second straight appearance in the Valero Alamo Bowl against Colorado last night. Second straight win, to be exact. Got a little excited to hit the microphone there. Texas has been tested all year, but losing senior quarterback Sam Ellinger to a shoulder injury, an obstacle the Longhorns never anticipated. The same spirit, though. Made it through the chaotic season, helped the Longhorns thrive without him. The sophomore signal caller, Casey Thompson, coming off the bench, passing for 170 and four touchdowns. Number 20, Texas, overcoming the injury. They came out victorious, beating the Buffaloes 55-23. to Texas finishing 7-3 this season. So there you go, Sarah. There's your sports for today. Thank you, Max. Appreciate it. <laughs> 442, 67 degrees out. Well, if you've ever had to deal with your health insurance, not getting a necessary prescription covered can be annoying and costly. Up next, some things you can do to make sure your medicine is still affordable. And next, the legal case intensifying against a woman accused of falsely blaming a teenage boy for stealing her phone. We have the details. In this morning's GMA First Look, the NYPD is trying to find this woman seen here confronting and physically trying to take a phone away from a 14-year-old boy claiming he stole her property. Show me, show me this phone. is my phone. Show me, no. You don't have to explain no. nothing to her. Take the case off, that's mine. You literally can get it back. Please. Are you kidding me? You feel like there's only one, one I... Officers now trying to locate the woman who left before police arrived at the Arlo Hotel in downtown New York where the incident occurred. Physically. The teen and his parents appearing on GMA Tuesday. We hit the lobby and she was all on him asking him for his phone immediately. For me, I was confused because I've never seen that lady ever. Um, and I didn't know what to do at the moment. And coming up at 7 a.m., the latest on the investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Adrian Bankert, ABC News, New York. All right, what happens more often than you might think, people are shocked to find out their insurance dropped the pharmacy they go to or their insurance doesn't even cover that the drug that the doctor prescribed. Here's 12 on your site's Marilyn Moritz with how to get the medicine you need at an affordable price. When Candida Vasquez went to pick up her blood pressure medication, she was in for a surprise. Her pharmacy had been dropped from her insurance network. I told the pharmacy when I called them that my blood pressure was high, both because I didn't have my medication and for their audacity to put me through such back and forth. Most health plans, including Medicare Part D, the prescription drug portion, encourage members to use a specific network of pharmacies. If you don't, you might have to pay more, a lot more. Another growing problem, medication that's no longer covered by your insurance. The list of drugs that insurers cover is, are actually decided by middleman companies called pharmacy benefit managers that when they negotiate deals with drug companies, they may change or even exclude certain medicines from their coverage. But some drug exclusions can actually save consumers money, like when low-cost generic versions of an expensive name brand drug becomes available. Your first step is to check with your pharmacy and make sure that all your insurance information has been entered correctly into their system. There may be some glitch that is stopping the insurance company from covering the drug properly. You can also ask the pharmacist what the lowest cash price they can offer is. Another tip, many plans require you fill certain prescriptions through mail order pharmacies. So if your drug suddenly jumped in price or stopped being covered, check to see if you'd be better off through mail order. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now is 67. I think we're going to traffic right now. We got yeah, Officer Nick Officer Solis. Nick. Yeah, well, right now, traffic's looking good. Nothing going on here. Accident just popped up here on 35 and 410. I'll get you more information on that. But right now, other than that, things are looking good all around the city. Let's go straight to Transit Guide. 410 at Babcock looking good. 10 at Crossroads looking even better right now. 10 at Days of Vala and 10 at the Y. Different parts of 10 all looking great. If you are headed to work or traveling, expect a smooth ride. All right, thank you, Nick. Now, yesterday we saw some of those wet roads, but today... Just humidity? Well, a lot of humidity. There have been a couple of sprinkles, and there, there's some out there. But throughout the day, we are going to see more rain developing. And if you're going to be, if you're leaving the house, by the way, what a beautiful picture at sunset yesterday. I don't think uh, tonight's, I think we're going to be seeing much of any sunshine at all today. Uh, maybe a little bit by tomorrow evening. Anyway, if you are leaving the house and you're going to be gone through tonight, 
take a jacket with you. Take a rain jacket with you as well, or an umbrella. Uh, but yeah, you'll need one by later on this evening because the front's going to move through and it's going to get windy. Picture uh, looking off to the northwest out there, 410 I-10, not bad. Here's those few little sprinkles, and a couple of them are now... Now oh, cropping up right here in Wilson County and again we'll see more of these uh, little showers popping up. So the front is off there to the northwest of us and it's a it's a doozy of a front. Temperatures drop off a good uh, 15 20 degrees even more so down below freezing around Amarillo right now and the timing of the front obviously depending on where you live it's going to be coming through the hill country first of all and about Oh, call it late afternoon or dinner time here in town as that front moves on through. The wind will shift around to the north. And as you see, even though the front comes through, it's not as though it's going to be clearing things out because we've got this flow coming in here out of the southwest. So a lot more rain will continue, <coughs> excuse me, overnight and through the day tomorrow. And as you see, some of that wintry precipitation starts to crop up there. This computer model in particular is a little more... Um, I guess you could say aggressive as far as any sort of wintry precipitation. So uh, some models don't quite have as much, but there will be some in the hill country with this cold enough air. We're not going to see anything around here. Still a few leftovers throughout the day tomorrow, and then things will continue to clear on out of here. Now, as far as today, we are going to see the chance for some strong to severe storms. There's the marginal risk eastern half of our viewing area, about 35, 37 east of there. High winds, maybe some hail would be possible. Then tonight we get the chance of snow late tonight and further west you go, the better the odds for some uh, snow, some mixed precipitation, maybe a little bit of um, some sleet mixed in, say Kerrville, Fredericksburg, perhaps a couple of uh, snowflakes there as well. And there actually could be um, a couple of inches of snow out in portions of the hill country, especially tomorrow uh, going through the afternoon hours, late morning into the afternoon. And there's also that winter storm watch that was posted goes into effect tonight at six o'clock up until tomorrow at six o'clock for the hill country. It does include Kerr County, Gillespie and Real counties north and west of there. So a couple of inches of snow is possible out there in especially far northwest portions of the hill country. You can see the winter storm warning even then beyond our viewing area and that is for late tonight or to this evening up until tomorrow evening. So the forecast today, a couple of showers will continue to develop by noon. Temperatures don't go all that far. I mean, we get up into the low 70s later on today. Showers, a few strong thunderstorms, especially off to the east. The front will move through then late afternoon, dinner time. Wind shift around is going to be windy tonight as well as tomorrow. And temperatures tomorrow basically don't move. We stay about 40, upper 30s, uh, lower 30s in parts of the hill country. That wintry mix northwest. And then I have a turkey on there Friday. I, I hit the wrong graphic. Okay. Turkey would be good. Uh, that is supposed <laughs> to be the New Year's craft. You know, everyone celebrates the New Year's differently. I was very confused. You know, I, I appreciate you changing it up a bit, Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be like black eyed peas and or, um, you know, my mom used to always make cabbage, ham and potatoes as the, uh, you know, the lucky foods for oh, New Year's. Oh, start but the New Year off well, right. Well, a new tradition here. We just started turkey. I'll change that. Okay. No champagne. Though, <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, no champagne, no <laughs> confetti, no just fireworks. Turkey. Just turkey. 452, 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a message of hope from Anthony Hopkins, who was offering encouraging words for anyone struggling with substance abuse. All right, time to take a look at those lotto numbers. Big numbers to talk about. Eight, four, five, fireball two. That's your pick three. Daily four, nine, zero, two, seven, fireball five. Sarah's going to have some big numbers to talk about, though. Oh, yeah, cash five, two, four, eight, nine, 22. And Mega Millions, 1, 31, 35, 48, 62. Bonus ball or Mega Ball, 19, Mega Plier, 3. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. Filming could once again be put on hold in Hollywood. Plus, Anthony Hopkins offering some encouraging words. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. As coronavirus cases surge in California, public health officials in Los Angeles are asking for a TV and film production pause. A memo from the Los Angeles County Department of Health is urging producers to, quote, strongly consider pausing work amid the county's catastrophic surge. The average number of COVID cases in Los Angeles on November 1st was around 1,200 a day. Now that number is over 13,000. But the county has not stopped handing out filming permits. A message of hope from Anthony Hopkins, marking 45 years since he got sober and offering encouraging words for anyone struggling with substance abuse. Today is the tomorrow you were so worried about yesterday. You young people, 
Don't give up. Just keep in there. Just keep fighting. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. That's he posted that video on Twitter. He turns 83 tomorrow and will next be seen in the film The Father, which is getting rave reviews. A new role for Fresh Off the Boat and Crazy Rich Asian star Constance Wu, Mom. She gave birth over the summer and somehow kept the pregnancy private until now. It's the first child for Wu and boyfriend Ryan Katner. She hasn't posted on Instagram since May. And happy birthday today to Tracy Ullman. The Emmy-winning actress, writer, and producer is 61, while Rise Up singer Andra Day is 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Okay, so of the people mentioned by Jason there, mm -hmm. I knew Anthony Hopkins. What? Do you didn't know? Okay. I'm out. I, I do we politics keep and sports. you up to speed, Max. I defer. All right, 458, 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, some $600 stimulus checks are already arriving to some consumers, but a measure to bump those checks to $2,000 is hitting a major block. Plus, do you remember the robots from Boston Dynamics? Well, yes. Don't worry, they are back. And as you can see here, they are dancing to their own groove. We have all the details ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning as more restrictions go into place here at home, a lot of local business owners are left wondering if they can last through this pandemic. Plus, another stimulus stalemate is taking shape in Washington as Americans begin to receive a second round of economic relief. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it is a humid start to the Wednesday morning. We're checking with Mike for your full forecast. Good morning, Wednesday, December 30th. Can you believe it? 2020 is almost over. Oh my gosh, but I feel like we can't get very excited about it. Like, mm. we just have to ease into 2021, look around, okay? So we go by Murphy's Law here. Anything that can go wrong will. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not continue to leave it alone. So, hey, uh, yeah, it's warm and humid right now, but boy, some big, big changes later on this afternoon. We've had some big fronts come on through here, but uh, this one's got a, a whole bunch going on with it um, from almost one extreme to the other. 67 degrees right now, wind out of the south at about 13 miles per hour, and again, a lot of humidity out there. The wind is going to be uh, breezy, and then it's going to be shifting around when that front moves through late this afternoon. Temperatures will uh, creep up in toward the low 70s later on so obviously not a huge warm up today but then a big big cool down later on today the aquifer did uh, drop down one tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours and there's a lot of mountain cedar out there now of course today's count comes out later on this morning and then after that big front tomorrow's count is going to be uh, interesting to see if those uh, mountain cedar trees get a big shake up later on tonight as well as throughout the day tomorrow there's a little bit of rain out there and we've got a couple more sprinkles that have uh, been trying to pop up over the past oh, half hour or so and as you can see right here in now parts of uh Wilson County, Guadalupe County, heading up toward uh, New Braunfels. A few more of these showers. So a couple more of these are going to continue to pop up, and then we'll see more rain, especially later on this afternoon as that front starts to work its way in our direction. So we will have showers and thunderstorms with the afternoon front. Some of those storms, by the way, in the eastern half of our area could be on the strong to potentially severe side. Uh, there is a marginal risk that's been posted. We'll show you that outline in just a just a few minutes in long weather. And then tonight, rain, snow, and sleet. Is in northwest and windy conditions as well. And there's also a winter storm watch posted for portions of the hill country starting tonight through tomorrow evening from six tonight till six tomorrow evening and then tomorrow throughout the day rain and then some wintry some sleet as well as some snow out further northwest in the hill country still windy then also it's going to be just cold all day tomorrow then we'll start to clear out by late tomorrow and 2021 is going to be starting off beautiful lot of sunshine and some cold temperatures we will get everything all sorted out in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now here is officer Nick Solis what's going on sir well, right now Mike we're dealing with two accidents here on 35 north the first one's going to be uh, the northbound IH 35 at Thousand Oaks Drives looks like it's on the main lane one vehicle accident. SAPD is on scene there and you go south of there on uh, eastbound northeast loop 410 right at Austin Highway. So right there when 410 meets 35, we got an accident right here right before Austin Highway. Just keep that in mind if you're heading that way. It's a two vehicle accident. Hopefully they can get it up. Uh, they can get it cleared soon. All right, 281 at San Pedro right now looking really good. Uh, no traffic there. Good news. 281 at the quarry. Now we're going a little bit farther down south 281. That looks great. And 281 at Grayson, a little more south going towards downtown. 
Man, very smooth traffic flow. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thanks, Nick. We want to get some late breaking news right now. Close to 20 fire units on the scene of a house fire. The call came out around 3 this morning, 700 block of Marshall Street. That's just northwest of downtown. Alicia Barrett, join us live from the scene with the latest. Alicia. Good morning. Well, firefighters have been at it since 3 a.m. and really just an hour ago, things look much different right now. Uh, calm in comparison to just about an hour ago because those flames were still uh, bursting out of the roof of this home. So we're on the 700 block of Marshall Lane from North Flores all the way to I-10 westbound. It's closed off right now. What we can tell you is that firefighters received a call. They say um, the flames were towards the back of the home. Those flames quickly spread and that's because of the material of the house. Lots of wood. It was built in the 40s. So you can just imagine how much wood there was. I spoke to Fire Battalion Chief Mark Black and he says that they had to actually break through some walls in order to let some of those flames out. They did have to fight it defensively. They even used the ladder. And right now they know there is a lot of damages, about $60,000. I asked him how it looks inside because arson and firefighters have been inside taking a look and he said it looks really, really beat up. The good news, no one was home at the time of this fire because this home is going um, under renovations. I can tell you the owner is on scene, obviously very worried. Um, she says that no one was home at the time, but she had big plans for this home. So we hope to speak to her uh, later on today to hopefully get some more information. But as of now, we do know that arson is here working the scene. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lisa. We're going to check in with her later this morning as well. All right, those long-awaited stimulus checks finally going out. But President Donald Trump is attacking his own party, saying the checks are not big enough. ABC's Avery Harper has the latest. This morning, another stimulus stalemate is taking shape in Washington as Americans begin to receive a second round of economic relief. The Treasury Department says direct deposits could have arrived as early as last night while releasing more details about payments for Americans who qualify. $600 for individuals, $1,200 for married couples, and up to $600 for each qualifying child. It all comes as a measure to bump those stimulus checks from $600 to $2,000 hits a major block. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked two attempts from Democratic senators to bring it to a vote on the floor. But McConnell added that the Senate will begin a process to bring three priorities to the table this week. The possible repeal of liability protections for social media companies, election integrity, and potentially the $2,000 stimulus checks, all Trump demands. But how the Senate will actually proceed is still unclear. Those are the three important subjects the president has linked together. After McConnell blocked the vote, Trump tweeted this warning, quote, unless Republicans have a death wish, they must approve the $2,000 payments ASAP. I don't agree with Donald Trump on much, but even a, even a broken clock is, has the correct time twice a day. And Democrat Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer urging McConnell to act. Leader McConnell holds the key to unlocking this dilemma. If you don't see a stimulus check in your bank account this morning, be mindful those checks just started going out last night and will continue for the next week. If you don't have direct deposit with the IRS, paper checks start getting mailed out today. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. Under Governor Greg Abbott's executive order, local bars here have shut down because of increased coronavirus numbers. But because some bars were actually able to get their restaurant license during the pandemic, some of your local spots, local favorite spots, are still open. And even though some are able to stay open, they must operate at 50% capacity. Now, people who are out and about these days, they say that going to bar is much more than just having fun. These restaurants need customers or like they're going to die out and they're going to go out of business. And like my father's a small time or a small, small business owner. Now the businesses that remained open are still implementing strict COVID-19 safety regulations in accordance with city and state regulations. All right, well, more and more people are turning to electric and hybrid vehicles. And in turn, they're actually saving a lot of money on fuel. And that has some lawmakers trying to figure out 
how to make up for lost revenue. Our Samuel King joins us now. And Samuel, one state house member is proposing a fee on these vehicles. Good morning, Samuel. Yeah, good morning, Sarah. A $200 fee on electric vehicles and a $100 fee on hybrid ones. It's not a new idea, actually. And this is all coming from Representative Ken King. He's from up in the Texas panhandle. He proposed similar legislation last year. And according to the Austin American Statesman, he believes that since more of these vehicles are on the roads, their owners should pay their fair share. Now, most transportation funding comes from fuel taxes, which of course many electric vehicle owners don't pay. 28 states now have some sort of fee on electric vehicles, ranging from as low as $50 to just more than $200. Now, the proposed bill comes as Tesla is building a massive new factory just outside of Austin, and the next session of the Texas legislature opens on January 12th. And coming up this morning at 6, more on how much money this proposal could generate. Max, Sarah, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Samuel. Time now, 510, 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead, why Apple is undergoing a major legal setback in one of its federal court cases. And are you sure that your resume is readable? It may not be to robots. Interesting. Just ahead, tips on how to get past the application tracking system. Oh, robots taking over the world, whether dancing or reading our resumes. All right, 67 degrees this muggy morning. Mike says we have some rain on the way. He'll let us know when and how much when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. Ever wonder why you only hear back from a handful of companies after you've applied to hundreds? It may not be that you weren't qualified. It could be that your resume wasn't qualified. So how can you stand out to make the slim cut? Our Erica Hernandez shares how to get your resume in the hiring manager's hands. The first person to read your resume isn't a person at all, and 75% of resumes will be cut before they're even seen by human eyes. There's a lot of applicants in the pool, especially for the really good jobs. An applicant tracking system, or ATS, is software that weeds out job candidates that either don't fit the description or had an unreadable resume. Here are some editing tips to get past the robot. Tailor your resume to fit each job's description. Being able to show them that you do have skills that they can, that will contribute to their workforce are very beneficial. Do find keywords from the listed requirements and include them in your work experience. Don't cheat and add keywords in white. The ATS will find out. Do use standard section headings as well as universal font. Bullet points are easily readable, however, don't include too much formatting. The ATS reads left to right, so using columns and graphics may cause confusion. After applying online, reach out by email to someone in the company and don't be afraid to name drop. And keep in mind, referred applicants are twice as likely to land an interview. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 5.15, 67 degrees out. Still ahead, why Apple is suffering a legal setback thanks to a federal judge in Florida. And we're going to tell you how much consumers around the world spent on Christmas in Apple's App Store and on Google Play. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. 
In today's Tech Bites, Apple suffers a significant legal setback. A federal judge in Florida has thrown out Apple's claim that a security research firm had violated copyright law with its software. That software helps researchers find bugs and other problems in Apple products. The tech giant's next move in the case is unclear. Consumers around the world spent more than $407 million on Christmas in Apple's App Store and on Google Play. That's a new record, and it's nearly 35% more than was spent last year. Outside of mobile games, TikTok was the top app in consumer spending. Finally, the robots from Boston Dynamics have invaded the dance floor. They're seen getting down to the song, Do You Love Me? During the mashed potato and the twist, the performance was done for the company's You're In Video. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. All right, Sarah, what are your thoughts on the dancing uh, robots? I need them to do like the washing machine. Like, okay. mix it up some. Officer Nick, I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, Sarah, but back in the day, I used to do the robot before. It was pretty good. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen here. We do have some accidents, though, so let's get to it. Just on 35, northbound 35 at Thousand Oaks Drive. Still dealing with this accident. And you're south of there at eastbound 410 at Austin Highway. We have this accident there right now causing a little bit of traffic buildup. As you can see with that moderate to yellow coloring right there, it means there's some moderate traffic. Please be careful when heading in that direction. All right, right now, 10 at the Y looking good. 35 at Martin. That looks good as well. And uh, let's do one more here. 10 at the Y looking good. Roadway's looking a little slick there. Please be careful. Two hands on the steering wheel and wear that seatbelt. Wonder when the robot's going to be able to dance as a, uh, a duet. Mm. Has no one seen the Terminator? Am I the only one concerned about this? Hey, <laughs> Skynet. Yeah. There I it mean, is. They're dancing. They're not terminating. We're okay. <laughs> right? Thank you. You say that now, Sarah. Exactly. Anyway, it's a slippery slope, Sarah. The full moon is today, although we're not going to be seeing it because there's a lot of clouds out there. By uh, maybe late tomorrow night, we'll be able to see in some places uh, the beautiful moon out there. But uh, that's a great picture. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect shot. Uh, nothing really showing up in this shot there. So, And there's nothing really showing up on, on radar all that much. We've had a few of these little sprinkles that have been trying to, to pick up here just near Floresville and then heading in towards Seguin. There may be a little bit, it looked like in some of those trans guide cameras that Nick was showing that uh, the roads could be a little bit damp in places. So here's the computer model. This is a different one that should last half hour. And what's interesting is how different models um, show especially what's going to be going on in parts of the hill country. So we'll have rain continuing to develop throughout the day. The front will move through about late afternoon into the evening hours. Wind's going to be picking up uh, in the overnight hour later on once the front moves through. And then tomorrow we will have a lot of rain, a lot of rain overnight and through the first part of the day tomorrow. And notice how the wintry precipitation, this model confines a little further off to the west in the hill country uh, out there in Edwards, Valverde counties primarily, and then further off northwest of there, and that's going to be the situation in through. This also keeps it around a little bit longer in through the uh, late afternoon and early evening hours tomorrow. Now, back to today. Here's the uh, severe threat, the marginal risk, pretty much along 35, 37 east of there. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats with that. As far as rainfall totals, we're looking at when it's all said and done, maybe an inch uh, to three inches, obviously a couple of heavier spots here and there that just jumped past it. But that would be uh, right about um, an inch of rain here in town is what some of the computer models are looking at. Now, as far as the chance of snow, it's further to the west you go, the better the chance for any sort of wintry precipitation. And it could be actually a couple of inches out there in western portions of the hill country. And that's where the winter storm watch has been posted. Obviously, it does include uh, curve. Gillespie counties and then further off to the west. So uh, Real and then Edwards County, Valverde, and it's going to be northern portions, especially up there around Edwards, Valverde County, where you have the better chance to see um, any sort of accumulation of snow. And then further to the east, maybe a little bit of a sleet mixed in with some of the rain. 70 today at noon, couple of showers around the area. They will continue to develop. We'll see a few more even this morning and then more, uh, especially throughout the afternoon. And some of those thunderstorms, some could be on the strong side in our eastern counties. 72 for high temperature today. Front comes through late this afternoon, about dinner time here in town, or just before that. Wind's going to pick up out of the northwest. Temperatures will begin to fall. Not going anywhere tomorrow as far as temperatures. It is going to be wet and cold throughout the day. I did it again. There we go. Keeping it alive. 
this is my way of saying goodbye to 2000 or 2020. So uh, and steps then in. Friday we start off and we'll have a freezing temperature. Same thing on Saturday morning. Of course, tomorrow, once again, though, we have that wintry mix mm -hmm. up in portions of the hill country and the winter storm watch in parts of the hill country. Six o'clock tonight till six o'clock tomorrow evening. And you changed your graphic. I was so upset. We had a turkey on New Year's. It's gone. You killed Lots the turkey. Balloons. Yeah, because we gave him a hard time about it. Uh, it's I like kind of our turkey. fault. It's, it's like the, the good luck meal to start 2021. What is your favorite good luck meal? Ooh. Ooh, we have to think about that yeah. one. Yeah, we're going to tease that. Champagne. Champagne. That's not okay. Okay, stop <laughs> winking at the camera. Time now, 524, 67 degrees out. We'll still ahead in your morning spotlight. Hollywood could soon shut down film production once again. Plus, a crazy rich Asians actress is revealing a big secret. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Wednesday. Now for the latest headlines from the world of entertainment. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. Los Angeles County is asking Hollywood to suspend work due to a catastrophic surge in COVID cases. The county's Department of Health is urging the film industry to voluntarily halt productions for a few weeks and avoid high-risk activities. No word yet on if any will comply. You really should have told me that you're like the Prince William of Asia. It's hard to keep a low profile when you're a movie star, but crazy rich Asians actress Constance Wu has been able to keep a big secret for months. She's a mom. Her rep revealed to E! News that Wu and her musician boyfriend Ryan Katner welcomed a baby girl over the summer. It's the couple's first child together. Don't give up. Just keep in there. Just keep fighting. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. Sir Anthony Hopkins tweeted an inspiring video message on the 45th anniversary of his sobriety. The veteran actor and Oscar winner talked about his successful fight over alcoholism and encouraged everyone to stay strong as we look forward to 2021. A happy new year. This is going to be the best year. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. He said it. He said this is going to be the best year. Oh, let's just hope so. There you go. All right, 528, 67 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on lawmakers' attempts to expand COVID-19 relief checks from $600 to $2,000. Plus, do you need an extra kick of caffeine to start your day? Yep. There you go. <laughs> uh, we're going to tell you about Dunkin's new line of coffee drinks that have even more caffeine. We'll explain. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Wednesday, 531 this morning, December 30th. Sarah, 2020. It's almost done. It's almost done. <clears throat> Only have what, a day and a half? A day and a half, and a lot seems like it's going to happen in the forecast in the next day and a yeah, half. Yeah, it's going to be a busy night. Impress your friends. Tell them that this is the penultimate day of the year. Ooh. Oh. Go for it, Sarah. Let's Yesterday hear it. was the antepenultimate. Tomorrow is the ultimate day of the year. So. Penul nice. Penultimate? Penultimate. Penultimate. So, yeah, there's your, your 25 cent word for the day. All right, uh, this picture, not bad. Obviously, we've got a lot of clouds out there, but nothing is really showing up. And uh, temperatures, though, boy, step outside. You sure don't need a jacket. Take one, however, take a rain jacket, take an umbrella if you're going to be gone throughout the rest of the day. And then if you're going to be gone through the evening hours, because it is going to be uh, much cooler later on tonight, the wind's going to start to pick up. It's fairly breezy this morning. And then uh, by late this afternoon, dinner time as that front moves through, the wind's going to be shifting around out of the uh, northwest. Couple little sprinkly shower and even more. Notice how it's starting to pop up. Not a lot, obviously, but just a few more little uh, specks here and there. And this will be the trend throughout the rest of the morning and then into the afternoon we'll see better chances of rain especially overnight and throughout a good chunk of the day tomorrow mountain cedar yesterday's count was very heavy 12,000 plus and that was after that front move through but that uh, it was very windy the day before and we have the southerly winds now the winds going to be shifting around tonight so it's going to be interesting to see what the count is tomorrow morning as well as on Friday throughout the rest of today we're going to make it up to 72 degrees today so we're starting off very warm well above normal we stay well above normal rain chances continue to go up especially into tonight we have the severe threat in our eastern counties marginal risk for a severe storm later on this afternoon as that front approaches high winds and hail would be the biggest threats and then later on tonight starting at six o'clock a winter storm watch goes into effect for northwest portions of the hill country through tomorrow night at six o'clock. Yeah, some of these eastern counties there will have maybe a little bit of mixed precipitation, some sleep mixed in further west. You
you go. It's going to be uh, more snow, maybe even a couple of inches of snow out in western portions of the uh, hill country. We'll get that all sorted out and see what's in store for first couple of days of 2021. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Salise. What's going on, sir? Uh, right now, Mike, nothing much. Uh, those accidents that we had on 35 cleared up. So that's good news there. Have a stalled vehicle downtown. Can't get trans guide footage of it and don't know where it is, but just keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction. All right, let's take a look at some drive times here. All right. If you're coming southbound from the city of New Braunfels to San Antonio, you got a 25 minute ride. If you're coming eastbound from the city of Bernie to San Antonio, that's 25 minutes as well. Now, if you're coming from Pleasanton on 37, coming up north, at 37, I mean, it's 29 minutes, so really looking really good there. All right, 16 to 4 Bandera right now on the northwest side, flowing smooth. That looks good, and let's do one more. Let's see what we got. 281 and 410 near the airport. Love that shot. Looking great as well. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, an update to some late breaking news and major structure damage. It's what's left after flames started in the first floor of a home just outside of downtown. Firefighters were called to 700 block of Marshall Street around 3 o'clock this morning. Our Alicia Barrera is live on the scene with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, we know that they've now established a fire watch, and that's because around 3.30 or so, it took them a long time to put out those flames initially. They were able to do so, but then shortly after, it rekindled. What we know, it started towards the back of this home that we're seeing right here, and it spread quickly up to the second floor and even up to the attic. You can actually see that smoke damage up at the very top of the home. Arson is on the scene trying to figure out exactly what happened. So far, what we know, according to the battalion chief, Mark Black, is that possibly a water heater is the area towards the back of the home where that started. But again, that's still under investigation. They do know that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of damage caused because of this. About $60,000 worth just so far. Again, the owner was here at the scene. We did speak to her. She's obviously uh, very distraught very overwhelmed by seeing all the lights and the action going on here. Um, but she says she is cooperating with authorities because she wants to get to the bottom of it. Was it an accident or is there a suspect that they need to be on the lookout for? Um, Battalion chief wasn't able to comment on if there is a suspect, but we know San Antonio police is on the scene. And again, he said he can't comment on that right now. So we will be um, staying in contact with them to get the latest. You can be sure to tune in here on air or on KSAT.com. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. President Donald Trump signing the relief bill over the weekend, hinting that he had secured promises that Congress would consider increasing the individual stimulus payment. The Treasury Department says direct payments of $600 are going out now. The House passed a measure to increase the amount of checks. Now it falls to the Senate. CNN's Reed Binion reports. Those are the three important subjects the president has linked together. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell laying out conditions for increasing the amount of direct coronavirus stimulus payments going to eligible Americans. This week, the Senate will begin a process to bring these three priorities into focus. Those priorities, increasing direct payments to $2,000, repealing liability protections for Internet providers and tech companies like Facebook and Twitter, and setting up a commission to look into President Trump's baseless claims of voter fraud. It's those second and third provisions that Democrats say are, quote, poison pills designed to make the bill fail. It's on the desk of Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader of the Senate. And what is he saying? I want to throw a few poison pills in there, see if I can discourage people from voting for this. President Trump grudgingly signed the coronavirus relief package over the weekend. The House then passed a measure to increase payments to $2,000. But with the two so-called poison pill provisions McConnell is inserting, the check increase is all but doomed to fail, a move Democrats say was deliberate. McConnell is intentionally trying to kill the $2,000 payments. We are not going to be able to pass a new piece of legislation with massively complicated internet reform and a voter fraud commission in it. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Well, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is weighing a plan whether to classify Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism. That's according to the New York Times. The U.S. officially removed, removed Cuba from its list of countries that sponsor terrorism in 2015 as part of a short-lived burst of approachment during the Obama years. The current State Department consideration could further cripple U.S.-Cuban relations that have hit their lowest point in decades. It could also throw a wrench in President-elect Biden's goals for diplomacy with the Cuban government, increased sanctions by the Trump administration and disruption of the tourism industry by the coronavirus pandemic have already damaged the island's struggling economy.
And Boeing 737 MAX is now back in action. American Flight 718 arrived in LaGuardia Airport after flight from Miami Tuesday. If you remember, the 737 MAX, that's the model that actually got grounded back in March of 2019. This after two deadly crashes. But Americans, well, their president said that they are ready to go and says that 737 MAX is more efficient and there are even more passenger amenities. American Airlines expects to expand the use of the Air Max or the Max in 2021. Southwest and United announced plans to add the plane to flight schedules in coming months. The Transportation Security Administration says nearly 1.3 million Americans traveled on Sunday. That makes it the busiest day of travel during the pandemic. On Monday, more than a million were screened. That makes Monday the seventh day out of the last 11, with more than 1 million people passing through checkpoints. The numbers are only 45% of the 2.5 million that traveled the same day last year. However, health officials are concerned because the numbers represent a spike in pandemic era travel. Time now is 539, 67 degrees out. And if you need something a little extra to kick off your morning, we'll tell you about Duncan's new line of coffee products. And next, President-elect Joe Biden laying out his COVID response plan. As some health experts say, the pandemic is likely to get a lot worse before he takes office. Take a look outside with live cam 67 degrees. It's a muggy start to our Wednesday morning. Mike says we have some good chances of rain heading our way and also a cold front. We'll let us know when we come back. Welcome back. President-elect Joe Biden preparing to assume office against the backdrop of this pandemic. CNN's Nadia Romero is in Washington with how he plans to lead the country through a crisis. The next few weeks and months are going to be very tough. As the U.S. suffers through the worsening coronavirus pandemic, President-elect Joe Biden is preparing to take office and warning Americans to brace for difficult weeks ahead. We have to anticipate that the infections over the holidays will produce soaring cases counts in January and soaring death tolls into February. Speaking in Delaware Tuesday, Biden laid out his administration's plans to take on the virus, including boosting the vaccine distribution effort and expanding testing. After 10 months of the pandemic, we still don't have enough testing. That's a travesty. That's why I'll propose a COVID action package early next year and challenge Congress to act on it quickly. Biden, urging unity, called on Americans to do their part by social distancing and wearing masks. Masking has been a divisive issue in this country. But COVID is a killer in red states and blue states alike. So I encourage you all to wear a mask. The incoming administration also hoping to lead by example to convince people to get the vaccine. It's about saving your life, the life of your family members, and the life of your community. Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris presenting a clear contrast to President Donald Trump, who has not spoken publicly about the pandemic in recent days and is facing criticism for a slower-than-promised vaccine rollout. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Time now is 544, 67 degrees out. And next, why masks may still be around for a little while longer, even though we have the coronavirus vaccines. Welcome back. Well, obviously masks and social distancing have become a normal part of our lives through 2020, but with the vaccine, are we still gonna have to wear masks? Doctors are saying yes, and we may be wearing them for quite some time. Here's why. Vaccines may give people a false sense of security that masks are no longer needed. Unfortunately, that is not the case. There are several reasons why we will still have to wear a mask after getting vaccinated. One, vaccination does not provide instant immunity. Both vaccines come in two doses, being administered weeks apart. After your first dose, you can still become infected because you aren't fully protected until you have both doses. Two, the vaccination trials did not track whether participants wore masks, so it's not clear if the vaccine's effectiveness had anything to do with participants also wearing masks and social distancing. Three, the herd immunity threshold for COVID-19 is unknown. For example, with measles, 95% of the population needs to be vaccinated in order to limit the spread. The percentage for COVID-19 has not been established. Number four, the duration of how long the vaccine will be effective for is still unknown. If this will be a vaccine, the majority of the population will have to get yearly or more than once a year or every so many years is still unknown. 
It is also unclear if the vaccinations will prevent the transmission of COVID-19 in regards to asymptomatic infections. The vaccine studies that are still being continued will hopefully answer a lot of these questions. In your morning headlines, environmental activists suing the Trump administration over a rule that allows faster dishwashers. A coalition of environmental groups filing a lawsuit against the Energy Department. They're upset about a new federal rule that would create a new product class of dishwashers. So these dishwashers would have a cycle time for the normal cycle of one hour or less for washing through drying. Now, activists argue that this new cycle could actually lead to higher household utility bills and more pollution. Well, if you need an extra jolt of Java to get you through January, Duncan has you covered. They're brewing up a new blend with 20 more, 20% 20 more caffeine than your normal cup of Joe. It's called extra charged coffee. You can sip on the buzzy brew starting today and don't worry, they'll be serving it up through the near year, new year as, as well. So along with two other new blends called Duncan Midnight and Explore Batch. Hmm. All right. Nick Solis, you're up dark and early this morning. Do you need that extra caffeine? Oh, yeah, Max. I have 300 milligrams of caffeine flowing through my veins right now. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. We can tell. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's go straight to the trans guy right now because things are looking good all over the city. Ted at ProBent, that looks good, flowing smooth there. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We got I-10 at Callahan there on the northwest side. That looks great. Uh, traffic flowing smoothly pretty much all over the city. No more accidents. 37 at Jones as well on the southeast side. Uh, that looks great as well. What about you, Mike? How much coffee do you drink in the morning? A pot. But Did you say a whole pot? Oh, yeah. Oh, not messing around. Oh, I, I just make it and then bring it here and just... Nurse that thermos all day, all morning long. So there you go. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> you forget to set the pot, and it's like. <laughs> so. Anyway, uh, look kind of murky out there in some of those trans guide shots. And uh, this picture doesn't look too bad. Nothing is obviously showing up other than uh, some clouds out there. We do have a little bit of rain and notice also how obviously there's not much, but a few more little specks are starting to show up around the area just to the northwest of uh, north of San Marcos there and a couple of more of these that are sliding in through Seguin. Obviously, it's not much, but we'll see more of these developing more of these showers developing throughout the day. As far as the humidity, yeah, it's really humid out there. We've got dew points well above 60 in most areas. That's going to be the case throughout much of the day. Then here comes the front throughout the uh, afternoon hour. And it is going to be making it through, obviously, uh, the hill country sooner. And then here in town, it's going to be late afternoon, um, close to dinner time. And then that will continue to work its way off to the east and pull in this drier air. Although, even though the air is drier, we still have a lot of moisture that's going to be coming on in here to still keep the rain around. So don't be fooled by the fact that we get lower humidity around here. We're still going to have an actually increasing rain chances as the front comes through and then in behind it tomorrow. Here's the uh, computer model that has uh, some showers developing throughout the day. There's the front moving on through and it's going to be again mid to late afternoon today. Then in behind it, here comes this low, which will be continuing to pump in all the moisture and that's when we'll see more showers, uh, even a couple of thunderstorms today. Now tomorrow uh, it's going to be just rain. We'll have thunderstorms out of the picture tomorrow, but then we start to see some of that uh, wintry precipitation and notice how it's going to be kind of a mix of some sleets, maybe mixed in with the rain here, say western Kerr County into northern Edwards County. And then throughout the day, we'll start to see maybe that change over to snow, especially further off to the northwest there in the hill country. Back to today, marginal risk for severe storms, high winds and hail in our eastern counties, and then as far as rainfall totals, this is going to be a good rain event as it's shaping up right now. Inch, uh, inch and a half, two inches, maybe some areas about three inches of rain, especially off to the east. And then we do have the chance for snow and especially further off to the northwest where you might see some accumulation. Uh, northern Valverde County, northern Edwards County, and that's where the winter storm watch is posted. Six o'clock tonight through six o'clock tomorrow. It does include Gillespie, Kerr, Real counties, and then north and west of there. So it's just northern portions of the hill country basically that are included in that winter storm watch. Today, we temperatures won't move all that much. We make it up to 70 at noon. A few showers around there. We're in the uh, mid 60s as of right now, and we'll top off at 72. Showers, thunderstorms are going to be developing. Uh, stronger storms, especially off to the east later on today. Front moves through late afternoon, uh, dinner time. Wind shift around. I did it again. Did the creature of habit. Oh, I just want you to see this full uh, seven day forecast oh. there. Uh, wintry precipitation later on tonight in the hill country, and then uh, throughout the day 
tomorrow in the hill country and we'll have some uh, decent rain around here. Other thing to notice. Plus, I want to make another grand entrance. Mm. Uh, temperatures basically don't move tomorrow. It is going to be cold. It is going to be wet and windy. Again, that snow northwest and starting off freezing on uh, New Year's Day. The weekend looks fantastic into the first part of next week. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. I'm going to start 2021 off with a car wash. Good idea. <laughs> All right, 553, 67 degrees out. All right, taking a look at some lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, five, fireball two, daily four, nine, zero, two, seven, fireball five. Cash five, two, four, eight, nine, 22. Here's one of the big ones. Mega millions, one, 31, 35, 48, 62. Big number 19, mega fire three. The mega millions now up to $401 million. Tonight's Powerball, $363 million. Good morning and welcome back. Time running out to enjoy a magical drive through experience brought to you by our KSAC community partners. Even though the holidays are wrapping up, you and the family can still enjoy an illuminated journey to the North Pole with the mile-long light display surrounding the AT&T Center. The event runs through January 3rd. Half the proceeds are going to be donated to Spurs Give, the Spurs sports and entertainment nonprofit partner. If you're interested in ticket prices and times, just head to KSAC.com. All right, so a lot left here on GMSA, 50 or 67 degrees out. And this year, a lot of industries have been hit hard by the pandemic, but some have actually thrived due to our circumstances. Just ahead on GMSA, a closer look at why online gaming has been among one of the big winners of 2020 and might not go away anytime soon. And we're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis, tell you what you need to know before you head out the door. The first known case of UK's coronavirus variant that has been reported in the United States. What health officials are now saying about how deadly and contagious it is. Another stimulus stalemate in Washington amid a second round of economic relief. We have the latest developments. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. It looks calm and quiet out there now. 67 degrees to start your day, but as you can see with that graphic, it's going to be a rainy day. We're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, Wednesday, December 30th. It's funny, uh, our producer Gabby texted me in the last half hour and said, Mike said it's going to rain, right? And that's why we saw the, the rainy day graphic come in. Yes, it definitely, well, we very much need this rain, Mike. I know we, it's been such a dry past couple of months. Right, and that's the best thing to take away from this forecast is the fact that uh, there's a chance for some decent rain around a good chunk of the area. Of course, there's going to be off to the northwest a little bit of a, kind of some wintry mix and everything. But uh, yeah, the, the main headline to this whole forecast, like I said, is the, the good rain chance around here. Nothing is showing up in this picture right now. We've got a little bit that's showing up on radar. And this will continue to fill in a little bit more as the morning rolls on than especially this afternoon and especially as that front approaches later on this afternoon and then going in toward the uh, the evening hour. So a couple of these little sprinkles uh, in and around some heading in toward Nixon, one or two of them near Seguin. And there may be a little bit of mist around the area. It seems like the roads. Um, Nick's going to show us this in just a couple of minutes on some of the trans guide cameras. It almost looks like the roads are damp in spots. Mountain Cedars yesterday count was just sky high and it's going to be interesting to see what happens after after that front moves through tonight and then tomorrow's mountain cedar reading. We do have a severe threat later on this afternoon as the front approaches and some uh, potentially strong to severe storms in the eastern half of our area. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats. And then off to the northwest, there is a winter storm watch posted. Goes into effect tonight at 6 up until tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Kerr, Gillespie counties, Real, and then off to the northwest of there. So just the northern fringes of our area. The further west you go, it's going to be more snow around Kerr County. It's going to be probably a mix of a little bit of uh, snow, maybe some sleet mixed in with some of that very cold rain. And it's going to be a cold, cold rain tomorrow. If you are heading out today, obviously you really don't need a jacket right now, but you're going to want one later on this afternoon. Take an umbrella and then especially if you're out into the evening hours because temperatures will be dropping down. 
70 by noon and then later on this afternoon a high temperature of 72 and again the wind will shift around uh, out of the northwest at about 15 25 miles per hour so it's going to be blustery overnight and tomorrow it's going to be cold and wet tomorrow and windy then it looks very nice for the start of 2021 details in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now here is officer nick solis and what's going on sir right now mike nothing much the accents are cleared up from earlier things look good around the city look at all that green on the screen traffic flowing very smoothly Everywhere you're going right now, if you're heading to work, if you're heading to get some food, things look good. 604 Bandera right now on the northwest side looks great. 281 at 410 near the airport looks great as well. Let's do another one. 281 at San Pedro. So we're looking, going a little north of there, flowing smooth, and we'll do one more here. 281 at the quarry coming back south of that last shot. That looks great as well. All right, Max, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Dozens of firefighters were dispatched early this morning to put out the flames that quickly destroyed a home located on the 700 block of Marshall Street. Arson has now taken over the investigation to determine exactly what caused this fire. Our Alicia Beretta has been live at the scene all morning. Alicia, was anyone home at the time? Sarah, I think that's the only bit of good news from this house fire this morning. Thankfully, no one was home. This house was just inherited not long ago by the new owner, Miss Deborah Bond. And you can imagine just how distraught she is right now. Um, the fire, uh, the fire engine that's going to be keeping watch here has just arrived. And that's because they were able to put the fire out around 3.30. The battalion chief tells me it was a, very hard to put those flames out. And then moments later, it rekindled. So right now, they just want to make sure that everything's okay. The fire started towards the back of the home. And in that back area, it spread quickly to the second floor. A lot of damages, about $60,000. What you can see, these homes are very uh, close together. So the big fear was that if those flames continued, it would spread to the other homes. But Thankfully, that wasn't the case. And another thing that we noticed is that, yes, the bulk of the damage is towards the back of the home. The good news with that is that the staircase that leads up to the second floor is to the left of the home. So arson was able to make it upstairs safely. That way they can continue with their investigation. Right now, they don't know if there's foul play, but they do know that, again, it started towards the back of the home. They're keeping watch over the area near the water heater. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the latest in the pandemic here at home. Mayor Ron Nuremberg announcing 975 new cases of COVID-19. 11 more people have died in the last 24 hours. Hospitalizations still trending upward. The city reporting 1,116 people in our local hospitals. 314 of them are in the ICU. 170 of them are on ventilators. Our seven-day moving average of new cases now at 1,165. Bear County health officials say the COVID-19 risk level is severe and it looks like it's getting only worse. Under Governor Greg Abbott's orders, all bars now shut down due to increased coronavirus cases. But because some bars obtained their restaurant license during the pandemic, some local spots remain open. Even though some are able to stay open, they still must operate at 50 percent capacity. People who were out and about say it's more about just having a good time. These restaurants need customers or like they're going to die out and they're going to go out of business. And like my father's a small time or a small, small business owner. The businesses that remained open are still implementing strict COVID-19 safe regulations. So those long awaited stimulus checks are finally going out. But President Donald Trump now attacking the Republican Party, saying these checks are not big enough. ABC's Avery Harper has the latest. This morning, another stimulus stalemate is taking shape in Washington as Americans begin to receive a second round of economic relief. The Treasury Department says direct deposits could have arrived as early as last night while releasing more details about payments for Americans who qualify. $600 for individuals, $1,200 for married couples, and up to $600 for each qualifying child. It all comes as a measure to bump those stimulus checks from $600 to $2,000 hits a major block. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked two attempts from Democratic senators to bring it to a vote on the floor. But McConnell added that the Senate will begin a process to bring three priorities to the table this week. The possible repeal of liability protections for social media companies, election integrity, and potentially the $2,000 stimulus checks, all Trump demands. But how the Senate will actually proceed is still unclear. Those are the three important subjects the president has linked together. After McConnell blocked the vote, Trump tweeted this warning, quote, 
unless Republicans have a death wish, they must approve the $2,000 payments ASAP. I don't agree with Donald Trump on much, but even a, even a broken clock is, has the correct time twice a day. And Democrat Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer urging McConnell to act. Leader McConnell holds the key to unlocking this dilemma. If you don't see a stimulus check in your bank account this morning, be mindful those checks just started going out last night and will continue for the next week. If you don't have direct deposit with the IRS, paper checks start getting mailed out today. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. And the United States now confirming the first case of a new COVID variant first discovered in the UK and thought to be even more contagious. So Colorado Governor Jared Polis announcing Tuesday that a man in his 20s with no travel history is the first known case in the United States. The man is now in isolation just outside of Denver. The governor says no close contacts of the man have been identified yet, but health officials now working on contact tracing. A doctor and member of the Biden-Harris Transition COVID Advisory Board says this new variant is almost certainly in multiple states. As of Tuesday, at least 26 countries and Hong Kong have reported cases of the new strain. Preliminary results from the cohort UK study indicates there is no reason to believe that the new variant causes a more severe disease. A limited number of local doctor's offices are now providing the COVID-19 vaccine. Private practices like pharmacies have to go through an enrollment and training process to get the vaccine. A physician and a staff at Castle Hills Family Practice got the vaccine themselves. Now they are thrilled to be offering it to their patients, but it takes special permission to get it done. They get the demographics of how many patients, of what category do you have, and how many people of healthcare worker designation, or how many elderly people do you serve, and what locations you have. Doctors must keep track of who gets vaccinated and report any side effects through a specific government system. They also have to prove that they have the freezers to sort, store the vaccine. Most offices like this physicians don't have deep freezers to store the Pfizer vaccine, but can accommodate the Moderna vials. Well, by this time next year, Tesla hopes to be producing vehicles at their new factory just outside of Austin. And if one state lawmaker has his way, drivers of those vehicles would now be paying a new fee. Our Samuel King joins us now. And Samuel, what's the idea behind this? Well, Max and Sarah, as more drivers turn to electric and hybrid vehicles, they may be saving money on fuel, but that means less money in gas taxes that help pay for new roads and for road maintenance. So State Representative Ken King, he's from up in the Panhandle, he's proposing a new fee on electric vehicles. Under his legislation, electric vehicle owners would pay a $200 fee and hybrid vehicle owners would pay a $100 fee. According to the Austin American Statesman, he says it's only fair as those drivers are using the roads too. Now, a similar effort by King stalled last year. The Legislative Budget Board found that the proposal could generate more than $28 million each year. Meanwhile, fuel taxes generated $2.6 billion, with a B, dollars during the last fiscal year. 28 states now have similar fees to the one that's being proposed. And this comes at a time when the state is seeing declining fuel and sales tax revenues during the pandemic. And lawmakers are coming up with ways to close a potential budget gap. The next session of the Texas legislature opens in less than two weeks. Max. All right, thank you, Samuel. Well, people all across the area ready to say goodbye to 2020, and they are preparing for an explosive send off. Staff at Alamo Fireworks says business is booming. Most public fireworks celebrations have been called off this year because of the coronavirus. So many customers tell us they're planning their own private celebrations. You know, even though the uh, county shows and city shows are canceled, they they still want to be able to celebrate and again just get rid of 2020 and say hello to a fresh new start. It's all made it safe through the virus. We have all our family together, so it's definitely something to celebrate. A friendly reminder, the sale and use of fireworks is banned within San Antonio city limits. Remember, if you have animals who are sensitive, like dogs to fireworks, make sure you keep them close by and indoors on New Year's Eve. Sure, all right, 612, 67 degrees out. Well, the NYPD will be upgrading charges against a woman who falsely accused a black teenage boy of stealing her phone. The details next on GMA First Look. And are you sure your resume is readable? It may not be to robots. Next on GMSA, easy tips on how to get past the application tracking system.
some much needed rain in our future forecast according to Mike. When we can expect the rain to hit our area, he'll let us know when we come back. 615, welcome back. Ever wonder why you only hear back from a handful of companies after applying to hundreds? It may not be that you weren't qualified, but you, that your resume wasn't qualified according to the applicant tracking system or ATS. So get this, over 98% of Fortune 500 companies use this system and when the average number of applications is 250, they only bring in four or six, four to six people to interview. So how can you make yourself stand out and make that cut? Well, Eric Hernandez shares how to get your resume in the hiring manager's hands. The first person to read your resume isn't a person at all and 75% of resumes will be cut before they're even seen by human eyes. There's a lot of applicants in the pool, especially for the really good jobs. An applicant tracking system, or ATS, is software that weeds out job candidates that either don't fit the description or had an unreadable resume. Here are some editing tips to get past the robot. Tailor your resume to fit each job's description. Being able to show them that you do have skills that they can, that will contribute to their workforce are very beneficial. Do find keywords from the listed requirements and include them in your work experience. Don't cheat and add keywords in white. The ATS will find out. Do use standard section headings as well as universal font. Bullet points are easily readable, however, don't include too much formatting. The ATS reads left to right, so using columns and graphics may cause confusion. After applying online, reach out by email to someone in the company and don't be afraid to name drop. And keep in mind, referred applicants are twice as likely to land an interview. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, another potential mistake, uploading as a PDF. 43% of resumes are sent as an incompatible file type and not every ATS can, scan, can read an, a PDF. Oh, interesting. Now, the online application usually specifies what they can accept, but sticking to a Word document is a safe choice. I never would have guessed that. I always send stuff in PDFs. Me too. I Doing know. it wrong this whole time. Apparently. Well, it seems like it's working out for us. All right. Well, 618, 67 degrees out. How's it looking out there on the roadways? Hey, Max, slowing down a lot right now. Things look great as opposed to what we were in the morning. We had a lot of accidents there on 35 and 1604, but now things look good here. A lot of green on the screen. Let's go straight to some drive times. All right, here we go. If you're coming in from the city of New Braunfels to downtown, you got a 26 minute ride. And if you're coming westbound on I 10 from Seguin to downtown, it's 29 minutes. If you can see it right there, looks really good if you're heading both those directions. 10 at Woodstone right now, flowing smoothly. Um, always good there. And let's do one more 10 at Probant, looking good. Just remember, roadways could be slick. Two hands on the steering wheel, wear that seatbelt and get to work safe. All right, thank you so much, Nick. So today we could see some rain and then you say there could be a wintry mix in the hill country. Yeah, far northwest portions of the hill country, like way, way out is where the better chance of seeing uh, some snow wintry mix. And uh, even in say Kerr, Gillespie counties, perhaps a little bit of a sleet mix in and that's going to be later on tonight and then tomorrow. We've got a couple of showers out there right now. Uh, temperatures, I mean, you know, it's funny talking about wintry mix when you're looking at these numbers and everybody's in the mid 60s right now. We are are above the normal high temperature for this time of year, which is at 62 degrees. We've got a lot of humidity out there. Visibility is good. Wind out of the south at 10 miles per hour and uh, not bad looking at this picture. We don't have anything showing up. However, we will continue to see more rain developing and and notice how this loops back through the past couple of hours. There were maybe one or two little sprinkles out there and now a few more have started to develop and even uh, well up there to the uh, northwest and these few little sprinkles again will we'll continue to sort of fill in as the morning rolls on and then especially later on this afternoon. So again, temperatures are in the mid 60s as of right now, but then you go up to the northwest and there's the front, which has just moved through San Angelo. Temperatures are going to be dropping down a good 15, 20 degrees and then continuing to get colder. And yeah, we've got some freezing temperatures out there that will come in a couple of days. We're looking at uh, uh, close to freezing here in town, definitely in the hill country, but not until New Year's morning as well as uh, Saturday morning wind out there to the northwest as well in behind that front. Uh, we're looking at 20, 25, close to 30 mile per hour winds. That's the sustained winds. Then we'll have some gusts on top of that. So again, showers will continue to develop throughout the rest of today. And there's the front. Now this computer model, been looking at a couple of different ones. So the timing of the front uh, is really dependent. That's why I've been saying here in town, it's going to be late afternoon or dinner time. This particular model has it a little bit later on 
We're getting its way through here about dinner time, obviously moving through the hill country, first of all, and also take note how everything through midnight and just the early morning hours tomorrow is in the form of rain and also heavy rain off here to the east. Uh, and that's going to be the situation as especially today. We'll more on that in just a moment. Now throughout the tomorrow, then it will be the course of the day. And this model is not as aggressive with any wintry precipitation either, but we'll start to see that later on this afternoon. Also, that model then clears us on out like everything else does, and it's going to be beautiful on New Year's. Back to today, as far as the severe threat that's in our eastern counties, high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats there. Also, some of the heavier rainfall totals could be well off to the east, but we'll still have some widespread one, two, even close to three inch rain amount. So this is going to be that's the, the headline to this weather forecast is that it's going to be a really good rain event. Now there is the chance for some snow off there to the west, especially further west, northern uh, Edwards County, Valverde County, northern parts of it, maybe one to three inches. And that winter storm watch goes into effect tonight for northwest portions of the hill country up until tomorrow evening from six tonight till six tomorrow evening. 70 today at noon, a couple of showers they will continue to sort of develop throughout the day. And then showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the strong side off in our eastern counties. The front comes through late this afternoon. And then we are going to be seeing windier conditions tonight and tomorrow wintry mix. Temperatures aren't going anywhere throughout the day tomorrow and it's going to be cold and wet. 32 degrees starting off on Friday and then the weekend looks absolutely fantastic. We're doing the triple box. Yep. Yep. I wanted to, I wanted to get out Just of the show off so the forecast. That, I love you can it. see that beautiful forecast there. There so. you go. <laughs> You're doing great, Mike. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. 622, 67 degrees out. Some robots, yep, they're getting ready to celebrate the New Year by practicing their dance moves. I can't wait to see this. The details next on GMSA. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Naturello has organic broccoli, blueberries, and carrots. Ours has polyethylene glycol. Vitamin E from sunflowers. Red 40 Lake. Which is another way of saying artificial coloring. Naturello Whole Food Multivitamins. Available on Amazon and Naturello.com. Instantly clear everyday congestion with Vic Sinex Saline Nasal Mist. <laughs> For drug-free relief that works fast. Vic Sinex. Instantly clear everyday congestion. Ocean Spray works with nature every day to keep you healthy. For pain relief, don't just block the pain with ordinary patches and creams. Help heal the pain with Thermacare. Real therapeutic heat increases blood flow to help accelerate healing. So you not only feel better, you get better. Thermacare. Real heat, real healing. In this morning's GMA First Look, the NYPD is trying to find this woman seen here confronting and physically trying to take a phone away from a 14-year-old boy claiming he stole her property. Show me this is my phone. Show me. No, you don't have to no. explain nothing to her. Take the case off. That's mine. Really get it back. Are you kidding me? You feel like there's only one, one I... Officers now trying to locate the woman who left before police arrived at the Arlo Hotel in downtown New York where the incident occurred. Physically. The teen and his parents appearing on GMA Tuesday. We hit the lobby and she was all on him asking him for his phone immediately. For me, I was confused because I've never seen that lady ever. Um, and I didn't know what to do at the moment. And coming up at 7 a.m., the latest on the investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Adrian Bankert, ABC News, New York. Consumers around the world spent more than $407 million on Christmas in Apple's App Store and on Google Play. That's a new record, and it's nearly 35% more than it was than was spent last year. Outside of mobile games, TikTok was the top app in consumer spending. And the robots from Boston Dynamics, they have invaded the dance floor. They're getting down to the song, Do You Love Me? Doing the mashed potato and the twist. The performance done for the company's year-end video. So Sarah Spivey, could you beat, or Sarah Costa, could you beat them in a dance-off? Definitely. 
Valerie, what's your, uh, your dance move of choice? The washing machine, you know? Remember no, Selena no, movie? No. They talk about the washing machine? Our producer's telling us to stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, 627, 67 degrees out. Well, in our next half hour, new developments on Breonna Taylor's case. Louisville police seeking to fire two more officers connected to the shooting. And taking out a live look out at the roadways. Not too busy morning. We're going to check in with Nick in just a bit. I'm ABC's Avery Harper in Washington, tracking the latest in the fight against the coronavirus. I'll have the details coming up. And taking a live look out at live cam, 67 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. As you can see in that graphic, we expect some rain throughout the day. Parts of the hill country could get pretty cold. We're going to check in with Mike in just a couple moments. 631 this morning. Sarah texted you to do live cam. I know. I, I, I just got it. It's OK. Beautiful <laughs> start to the morning, though. It's going to be, I mean, thank goodness, 2020 has come to a close. But in the next couple days, we are going to see the forecast up and down. Yeah, lots going on in the forecast. The uh, the headline to this, though, is a nice rain event. Uh, a lot of folks are going to see inch, uh, inch and a half, two inches of rain, and in some cases, even more than that. And yes, there will be a little bit of uh, wintry precipitation way out in far northwest portions of the uh, hill country. 67, as you mentioned, we are five degrees above the normal high temperature. So just things are out of whack, but that's all going to be changing later on today. A lot of humidity out there. Wind right now is out of the south at about uh, 10 miles per hour. We've been seeing some of these uh, showers continuing uh, to kind of pop up. Obviously, there's not a lot out there right now, but uh, we will see more of these trying to develop and even a couple little looks like little specks that are moving through town. So just uh, kind of assume that some of the roads are going to be damp if you uh, if you're heading out this morning. Mountain Cedar yesterday's count was very, very high 12,000 plus and it's going to be interesting to see what that does after that front moves through later on tonight. So we'll have some showers and storms developing. Some of those storms could be on the strong, potentially severe side later on today that front moves through later on this afternoon tonight rain and then some wintry mix out in northwest portions of the hill country and it's also going to be very windy once that front moves through tomorrow cold wet wintry out in northwest portions of the hill country and uh, yeah it's just going to be one of those days where you can hopefully hunker down with a fire in the fireplace tomorrow we've got the marginal risk for severe storms in our eastern counties 35 37 east of there and that's later on this afternoon as that front moves on through and then tonight at six o'clock the winter storm watch for parts of the hill country this is kerr uh, gillespie Real counties northwest of there. So just northern fringes of our viewing area would see some of that uh, wintry precipitation, but that's from six o'clock tonight until six o'clock tomorrow evening. Then things are going to uh, start to clear out around here. More on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. And well, just look at the map. Looks like it's a uh, pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, smooth sailing, Mike. Exactly. No accidents to report right now. No construction. Things look good right now. If you are headed to work, you got to Time, stop, get a honey butter chicken biscuit, bean and cheese and bacon, whatever you want. You got time because things look good. Let's take a look at some inbound time saver traffic drive times. All right, here we go. If you're coming from the city of Bernie, eastbound to San Antonio, you got a 24 minute ride. All right, if you're going 90 eastbound on Castroville, you got a 20 minute ride hit the San Antonio city limits and Lavernia 23 minutes coming in westbound. Good news there. Good times there. All right, here we go. 410 at Everett's looking good right now. Traffic definitely picking up a little bit, but not bad at all. And uh, let's see what else we have here. I 10 at Woodstone. That looks good there on the northwest side. And let's see, let's do one more. I 10 at Pearl Band on the other side of I 10 going towards south downtown looks great as well. All right, Max, Sarah, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Firefighters are monitoring a home on the city's north side this morning after it caught fire overnight. So all of this happening around 3 a.m. This is the 700 block of Marshall Street. Firefighters say the flames started in the back of this two story home. It was actually caused by a water heater. Firefighters knocking down the flames, but it actually reignited officials on the scene telling us no one lives in the home, but utility services says it was still active. Arson was called out to investigate damage now estimated at $60,000. Now to the latest on the pandemic, coronavirus and Congress this morning, 
a community and a nation mourning the loss of an incoming member of the House of Representatives. He died because of this virus. Over 124,000 Americans are currently hospitalized according to the COVID-19 tracking project as a more contagious strain from the UK is detected here at home. ABC's Avery Harper with the latest from our nation's capital. Louisiana Congressman Luke Letlow is now the first member of Congress or member elect to die of COVID-19. The Louisiana Republican husband and father of two was hospitalized on December 19th and never recovered. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards saying in a statement, quote, I am heartbroken he will not be able to serve our people as a U.S. representative, but I am even more devastated for his loving family. The news comes as the more easily spread mutation of COVID-19 from the U.K. is discovered in rural Colorado. The patient with the variant is a man in his 20s with no travel history. Health officials saying distribution of the vaccine, which is believed to be effective against the variant, is critical. Only 2.1 million doses of the vaccine have been administered. That's far behind the 20 million that the Trump administration promised by the end of the year. President-elect Joe Biden issuing a stark warning. If you continue to move as it is now, it's going to take years, not months, to vaccinate the American people. Trump administration officials say the federal government can only do so much. The federal government doesn't invade Texas or Montana and provide shots to people. We support the state and locals in doing that. Meanwhile, hospitals in California are struggling to keep up with the number of patients who need critical care. It's nonstop. Hospitalizations in Los Angeles County up nearly 1,000 percent from two months ago. And hospitals are at risk of running low on supplies. If we can't keep an adequate supply of oxygen, patients are going to die. We have yet to see the impact of millions of travelers this holiday season on coronavirus case numbers. Many health officials are bracing for surges in the new year. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. The federal government says nearly 20 million COVID-19 vaccines have been allocated for states. Officials say an allocation of a vaccine is not a confirmed shipment, but it is the amount of vaccines that have been set aside for states to be able to order. Data from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows only 11 million doses have been distributed nationwide. The Trump administration promised that 20 million doses would be administered before January 1st. Yet, according to the latest data from the CDC, 2.1 million vaccines have actually been administered. A pharmaceutical company now claiming their COVID-19 antibody therapy reduces the risk of death from the coronavirus. So according to Regeneron, the pharmaceutical company, their antibody cocktail reduces the risk of death by 50% in patients currently in the hospital that require low flow oxygen. So the drugs also supposedly cut down on the need for mechanical ventilation in some patients. The new study focuses on patients in the hospital who are not receiving antibodies. The FDA granted an emergency use authorization for Regeneron's antibody cocktail back in November. Two officers connected to the shooting death of Breonna Taylor could soon be fired. According to the attorneys, detectives Joshua Janes and Miles Cosgrove received pre-termination letters from Louisville's interim police chief just yesterday. Authorities say Janes violated the department's procedures for preparation for a search warrant and truthfulness. The FBI found that Cosgrove fired the shot that killed Taylor during a botched no-knock search warrant back in March. Louisville's police chief has scheduled a pre-termination hearing for the officers set for tomorrow. One other officer has already been fired for the shooting. Argentina's Senate has approved a landmark bill legalizing abortion. The bill passed with 38 senators voting in favor, 29 against, one abstained, and four did not attend. It's a divisive issue in a predominantly Roman Catholic country, bringing out huge crowds of protesters on both sides. The proposal would allow for abortions up to 14 weeks. They had been permitted only in cases of rape or danger to the mother. Women's rights groups say the bill's passage could set the stage for wider reform across Latin America. And 2020 through the eyes of KSAT. It is the name of our end of the year special set to air tonight at 7 o'clock right here on KSAT. From COVID-19 to protest hurricanes and the election, the year 2020 is definitely one for the record book. So here's a preview of what you can see. 2020 has been upside down and inside out. 2020 in a new sense. 
I, I don't even know where to begin. Tonight, we're announcing our stay-at-home emergency declarations. March Madness has been canceled. I figured there was going to be a lot of glass. Then the protesters marched to the Bear County Courthouse, back to SAPD, and now here. They're putting themselves in harm's way. I can't breathe! I have never lived through anything that comes even close to COVID-19. Nobody could have seen this coming. Well, 2020 through the eyes of KSAT was put together by our executive producer, Jason Foster. He joins us live today on GMSA at 9 to tell us what went into the making of this special and why you should definitely check it out. I know a lot of our photographers put a lot of time into editing this as well. Absolutely. 641, 67 degrees out. Well, this year, a lot of industries have been hit hard by the pandemic, but some have actually thrived. Next on GMSA, details on the success of online gaming in 2020. Well, this year, a lot of industries have been hard hit by the pandemic, but some have actually thrived because of our circumstances. So online gaming has been among of the big winners of 2020, and this thriving might not go away anytime soon. Let's take a look at the current situation. The Nintendo Switch was largely sold out during the summer and even during some of the holidays. And then in November, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X sold out immediately. And these months during the pandemic, more people became gamers and more people started watching gamers. Things like the live stream services, Amazon's Twitch and Facebook gaming, they actually logged record growth. Facebook announced in October it had launched games on Android and it even expressed confidence that they would continue to grow in 2021. And despite the recession and high unemployment numbers across the country, a lot of companies in the game industry are confident that gaming growth will continue in next year. Tech giants like Google and Amazon, they are still investing in their cloud gaming services like Stadia and Luna, hoping to join into the console wars dominated right now by Sony with PlayStation and Nintendo with the Switch. Now, Google's video platform, YouTube, logged its best year ever in 2020, more than 100 billion, yes, billion with a B, hours in gaming content watched. The head of YouTube Gaming says economic conditions like the recession are ultimately out of our control, but the company would continue its strategy of entertaining people next year while vying for their attention spans. And an analyst with Nielsen's video game arm, Superdata, says that they don't foresee anything in terms of a gaming crash because of economic factors. There's a lot of people stuck at home shifting discretionary spending to gaming. All right, so Nick Solis, are you big into the gaming world? Did Santa bring you a PS5, Nick? No, I don't have a PS5. I still have my Super Nintendo and I still play it. It looks good. Not yet. <laughs> Old school. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have a PS5. I, I am into gaming. I like games a lot. Just not as big as I used to be, but wish to get, my brother is, wish to get back there though. All right. A lot of green on the screen here still. No accidents to report. No construction. Things are flowing smoothly right now all around the city. Let's go straight to the trans guide here. Ford Tenet Evers looking good there. Kind of northwest side there by Bandera Leon Valley. I tenant Woodstone looking great. Great as well. Um, yeah, very good picture there. And we got 10 at ProMamp. That's looking good too. So traffic is, is running smoothly right now, just like the Cowboys ran through the Eagles last Sunday. Dang. Right, there we go. That was good. Good transition. <laughs> All right, what about you, Mike? Are you being into the gaming world? <laughs> no, not that much. My boys are, of course. I mean, they, they love all that stuff. But PS5 I, under the Christmas tree this year? Uh, no, they've got their... Um, the Switch? The Switch. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah, hard to get. They've got that, so... And they're big into um, Mario Brothers and so Oh, forth. yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, this picture is not bad. Uh, we've got a lot of clouds around, of course, but there's nothing, uh, you know, no fog, no rain, anything showing up in this shot. We are seeing a couple of more showers developing. Obviously not a lot, but just in the past couple of hours, we've seen a few more, and they will continue to sort of develop. We've had a few of these little specks. If you kind of blink, you miss it, these few specks in and around town. So just watch out for some damp roads this morning. Of course, the front is off to the northwest of us. Much colder temperatures are going to be moving on in here as that front moves through. It's going to be later on this afternoon, and the timing of it uh, really depends on basically which computer model you're looking at. It's about a... Uh, two, three hour difference. Some have a little earlier, some wait until about dinner time or even thereafter here in town. It's going to be very windy in behind that front as well. So here we go.
throughout the rest of the morning. We'll have a couple of showers around. They will continue to sort of uh, pick up, become a little more uh, widespread in aerial coverage. This is one of the models that has the front a little bit uh, slower and brings it through about dinner time. And as it moves through in our eastern counties and as it hits this warm, humid air, it's going to be the the classic kind of conflicting of two air masses. And so that's why we do have the chance for some potentially severe storms off to the east. Notice how by later on tonight, this model has it all in the form of rain. Now, might start to see a little bit of mix out there in northwest portions of the hill country, but this model brings it in throughout the day tomorrow. We still continue with a lot of rain around here and any accumulation looks like it would be northern Edwards, northern uh, Valverde counties, and even in and around, uh, say, Kirk County, County and parts of Bandera, there could be a little bit of a sleep mixed in, maybe a snowflake or two mixed in with some of the rain. Then it clears everything out by uh, as time we ring in the new year by uh, late tomorrow night and Friday morning. And it's going to be a beautiful start then going into Friday. Severe threat, marginal risk in our eastern counties. And this is uh, about to uh, say. Uh, 37 or so forth straight south and then off to the east and that's going to be later on this afternoon. Decent rain. This is the big story with this whole weather system coming on in here is the widespread good rain today as well as throughout the day tomorrow and then there's that chance for some snow and there's also a uh, winter storm watch posted for portions of the hill country starting tonight and going in through tomorrow evening at six o'clock. So the forecast today still going to be warm and humid. We'll see some showers developing throughout the day. 70 at noon and then 72 for a high temperature. Some of those thunderstorms later on this afternoon, especially to the east, could be on the strong side. Front moves through. It becomes windy. Temperatures will continue to drop down. Then we'll start to see maybe late tonight, but especially tomorrow, that uh, wintry mix and some uh, maybe some snow in northwest portions of the hill country. It's going to be cold and wet and rainy and windy tomorrow. And it's just going to be one of those days where you can hopefully throw the covers back over your head. And that's going to last through the uh, late afternoon hours. Then we clear on out and it looks beautiful going in through the weekend to start off 2021. All right, thank you so much, Mike. Time now is 651, 67 degrees out. Well, if you're planning to drink as you ring in the new year tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio, we give you some tips on how to help a hangover. Hmm. And taking a live look out at live camp. It actually looks calm and quiet out there. Is that the sun starting to peak out? All right, 67 degrees. We'll be right back. For hours this morning, dozens of firefighters remained at the scene of the 700 block of Marshall Street. That's between Flores and I-10 East, and that's because this home caught fire. I spoke to Fire Battalion Chief Mark Black, and he tells me that the fire they believe started towards the back of the home, possibly around the area of the water heater. It spread quickly to the second floor and even up to the attic. You can still see that smoke damage at the very top of the home. Thankfully, no one lives here at this moment. I was able to speak to the owner. She's obviously very worried for what's to come because as of right now, you can see a lot of damages. It's estimated to be $60,000 worth in damages. Arson does remain at the scene to figure out exactly what happened when the flames broke out around three this morning. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Let's check in with Officer Nick Solis one more time with traffic. Yes, here right now I just got an accident and it's going to be here. It's going to be northbound IH 35, uh, the off ramp to eastbound I 10. Keep that in mind if you're heading that direction. Right now, 1604 in Bandera looks good. Mike? Well, we got a couple of breaks in the clouds looking off to the east. Now, despite that, there is some rain being reported out there at the airport. Just a lot of these light sprinkles, uh, mainly off to the east. And you can see just one or two little uh, specks of rain that are kind of moving through town. So some damp roads out there. Very, very mild temperatures. 72 today. The front's going to move through. It's going to be uh, later on late this afternoon. Ahead of that, we might see some strong thunderstorms in our eastern counties as it moves on through here. And then later on tonight and especially tomorrow, maybe some mixed precipitation. Precipitation that winter storm watch for portions of the uh, hill country. It's going to be wet and cold and windy tomorrow and then beautiful to start off the new year. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here 9 a.m.